What's up guys, my name is Welton King V from Kawaii Sin Games and in this episode of our FPS multiplayer tutorial, the long-awaited episode, I'm going to be showing you how to sync player animations over the network. Now, just as a disclosure, I'm not actually going to be teaching you how to make the animations. Uh, just, you're going to have to watch tutorials on how to do that yourself if you're not already familiar. Uh, but really, this is a tutorial series for people who understand the basics of Unity uh, and are already pretty far in. Uh, so if you don't understand animations, go check out other tutorials to learn how to animate objects. Uh, I would also recommend checking out blend trees. And once you're comfortable with all of that, come back and I'm going to teach you how to sync those animations over the network uh, and also how to uh, uh, interact with your animator through the FPS controller script that we have so far. So without further ado, let's get into it. Kawaii. Okay, so I'm in the player prefab, uh, and to set this up, I'm going to select the player, and then I'm going to go to animation, click create, uh, assets, animations, uh, create a player folder, and then just do um, idle, uh, and that way we now have a animator on our player that has this player controller inside it, uh, and now we also have the idle animation. And um, on your armature, you're going to want to make sure that your armature does not have an am animator on it. So, uh, so, or like your 3D model. So mine is default armless player um, and it has this animator object on it. We do not want this because if we tried to uh, animate like the body, for instance, um, as you can see, like if I click on the player and I try to want to, and I want to record on the idle animation, I go to body, it goes away. The reason why is because you have this animator on this model. So remove that component. Uh, and then you should be able to go back to player, click record, and then click on body. And then you can actually set up that animation now. There we go. So there we go. Uh, and now since this is not a tutorial on how to make animations and rather a tutorial on how to sync the animations, I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera, but I will be right back. I'm going to go ahead and just make a really simple, really simple animating uh, system real quick. Animations for walking and probably it. That's probably all I'm going to do for now. <laughs> okay, so I just made some very simple animations uh, and I've all I've done so far is make an idle animation and then walk animations in the basic directions. Um, and I put those into a blend tree called motion, uh, which run off the parameters horizontal and vertical. Uh, so as the horizontal, if we click here, you'll see the graph here, the motion graph. Um, as I, if we're moving horizontally, you can see that the animation on the right, which is walk right, becomes most prominent. If I'm walking horizontal and vertical, uh, then we mix uh, walking forward and walking right. And then that becomes pretty, that should be pretty self-explanatory. If you don't know how to use blend trees uh, and you don't really know how to animate, I suggest that you go look at some animations, uh, I mean some tutorials on how to do these things because they're very useful. Uh, and now I'm just going to be showing you how to, once you have your whole controller put together, how to get that uh, synced over the network uh, and how to interact with it through the FPS controller script. So we have our motion uh, or our what are they called? Blend tree. Yeah, our blend tree <laughs> motion. Uh, we have all our animations in this animator. Uh, now all we need to do is actually interact with these parameters um, through our player controller, and then we need to sync this over the network. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our player and open up our player script. And as you can see, I also put the game window in the bottom right corner. This is because whenever I start testing it, we're going to watch the player um, and we're going to watch the player through the scene and move the player through the game window at the same time so we can make sure that the animations are working properly. And this is actually fairly simple to do. Uh, it's, once you guys learn how to do this, like I, it's going to be so easy for you guys to like make your own animations and work on your own controllers and sync everything over the network. Uh, really easy. So right here, uh, we're just going to add in a private animator variable um, called anim private of type animator anim and then at the start we're going to set anim if photon view uh, dot is mine so we're just going to do anim equals get component animator because remember our animator is on the root of our player object so we can just call get component animator set it to anim and then all we have to do is in our update we're going to add a new section at the very end called um, or not at the very end we'll do it here called animations See if we've been doing double. Yeah, we've been doing double. Okay, let's see. 
hit that double but right there right here okay then we just need to set all of our animation uh, parameters so right now the only we have a very simple controller so the only parameters we have are uh, horizontal and float uh, and vertical um, so I'm just gonna create some temporary variables float uh, T underscore anim underscore horizontal equals 0 F and then float T underscore anim underscore vertical equals 0 F uh, and the reason why I'm doing this is so that we can create different, um, basically, cases. Right now, it's very simple. We only have walking, but, like, if you added your sprint animation and you added, um, like, if you want to add, like, jetpacking animations and you had, like, different kinds of motion animations, uh, like an animation for sliding and all of that, which you will need. Uh, I'm just not going to show you how to do it in this video. Uh, you just make them yourself and then just follow the same concept. Um, then we can actually put some cases here. So we'll just say if grounded or if is grounded um, and since I'm gonna be using the same animations for now for running and sprinting then this is all we really need if is grounded t underscore anim horizontal equals uh, horizontal where is our horizontal variable what's oh, in fixed update yeah let's move this into fixed update so cut this out move it into fixed update my bad mobby yeah we can add this to the end of fixed update here Get rid of that so we have our aiming camera stuff and then we're gonna have our animations uh, and then here we can say uh, t underscore or t underscore h move there we go and then t underscore anim underscore vertical equals t underscore v move for the most part these should be uh, I believe we normalize these let's make sure t underscore h move equals H move equals input that get access raw horizontal. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Actually, I don't think I want to use th move and tv move. Let's use t underscore direction because we normalize that. Yeah, we're going to use t underscore direction. So uh, for t anim horizontal, we use t underscore direction dot x. And then for t anim vertical, we're going to use t direction dot z. And the reason why is because if we come up here to our t direction where we define it, t direction, uh, our t direction is going to be equal to uh, t underscore h move as the x value. So that would be horizontal movement. And then our z value is our vertical movement. Um, and then we normalize that vector, which means that uh, the the sum of the squares, the square root of the sum of the squares is going to be equal to one. So the sum of the squares would also be equal to one. Uh, and then just like that, all we have to do now is make sure that we actually set those parameters in our anim. So then set anim dot set float uh, horizontal. We're going to set that equal to t underscore anim horizontal. And same thing for vertical. Vertical. Now this is just one example of how you would set it up in your FPS controller. You can also just call animations directly. It's all up to you. I just I just use a blend tree and I use parameters to move between animations when it comes to motion. Uh, but watch other animation tutorials on how to do animating if you don't know how to do it yet. Um, and then uh, as long as you have, as long as you're actually animating that character, it doesn't matter how you do it. As long as it's animated properly uh, and the only player that's being animated is yours on the client. Um, then the syncing is going to be really simple. So all I'm going to do is make sure, verify that this is working properly. So we're going to save it, let it compile in Unity, and once it's compiled, we're going to run it, and then we're going to watch the player from the scene view uh, interact with the player through the game view. And now that's saved. And basically just to kind of completely to uh, summarize what we just did in the script, was we essentially just made it so that the um, whenever you are moving left on the left or right on your game stick or with the WASD D keys, whenever you're moving left or right, it interacts with this horizontal parameter. Whenever you're moving up or down, it's just interacting with the vertical parameter. So holding W or moving up will turn vertical equal to one. Holding S or moving down will turn vertical equal to negative one. And same thing for horizontal. That's all we did. And we're going to file save, file save project, and then we're going to run it. Okay, so we're going to wait till we're connected. 
connected and we're going to click create match and I'm going to come over here and make sure that we're looking at the scene get out of the prefab okay and then we're going to come here and resume let's try to zoom in on our player here there we go and then let's click resume and if you can see if I stop moving there is an idle animation and as you can see when I'm when I'm moving I actually am animated <laughs> that's cool. We move super fast, but that's all right. There we go. Uh, since we move so fast, I can't tell whether or not it's the correct animation for what we're trying to do. Here, let's try slowing down our player a bit. It's going into resources, players, and then over here, changing his speed to maybe 200. Try this again, and we're just wanting to make sure that we're uh, getting the correct animation with whatever we're doing. So let's try to get back to that um, square. I believe it's this bad boy right here. Oh, okay. Okay. There we go. So now should be moving. Yeah, there we go. We're moving in the correct direction. And we're strafing as well. So now all we need to do is get that uh, animation to sync over the network. And once again, those are really basic animations, but it's all, <laughs> it's, all, it's all I was able to do. All right, now let's sync that over the network. I promise you, super easy, super uh, no pain at all. You're gonna go to your player prefab, add component, uh, animator photon animator view um, so and then I'm gonna run you through what this kind of what this means at least up to how I understand it um, so photon animator view so just like in our photon view we're able to actually have a scripts that are being observed uh, and then are being synced over the network uh, you're going to add your photon animator view and then you're going to click and drag that component and add it, or let's click the plus sign, and then click and drag the photon animator view into an observed component. Now what the photon animator view does is very simply, it just um, syncs uh, your animator, your animations across the network. And so, uh, synchronized layer weights. I don't have any other layers other than layer zero. I wouldn't worry about this unless you're a more advanced animator and you actually have tons of different animations and different layers and layer weights. Uh, so just leave that disabled. And then synchronize in the parameters. In my case, I am going to because I uh, use a blend tree. Uh, so I'm going to click continuous and continuous for horizontal and vertical. And if you want to know the difference between these, disabled means that uh, the the val that parameter is not being synced over the network at all. Um, discrete means that it is being sent, uh, I believe, 10 times per second. And then continuous means it is being sent every frame. The data is being sent every frame. So the incentive to, you you are incentivized to send as little information as possible to make the network lag as uh, small or as insignificant as possible. Uh, but the more continuous or the more constant the messages are, the more smooth um, and in sync everything is. So continuous, horizontal, vertical, um, and that, that's it. That's it, you're done. That, that is what syncs it over the network. As long as your animations um, are only being controlled on the uh, client, which we make sure to do because we can only get this far in fixed update if photon, if it is your photon view, because if it's not, we don't run through fixed update, which means we can't adjust those parameters on the anim object. And we only set the anim object in the start function if this object is yours. So like if it is, hold up, where did we set the anim? If photon view dot is mine, then we can set the anim. So under this, under the way I've designed it here, um, the only way you can alter the animations of the object is if it is your player. Um, and then we sync that over the network using the photon animator view, and we make sure that it's being observed by sending it in with the photon views observed components. And that is all you need to do to sync the animator. So now if you add more parameters, if you add different layers and you have uh, multiple layer weights and you have tons of different animations, it will all be synced as long as you handle it properly on your client. Uh, you don't actually have to worry about any of the networking code when it comes to your player animation. 
Um, and with as for the weapon animations, we've already covered that in previous videos. Okay, that's it. That's it for this tutorial. Let's get intimate. If you like this video and you want to see more, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. We just recently hit 2,000 subscribers, which has been our goal for like months. Uh, now that we've hit that, our next goal is going to be 5,000 subscribers. So we can, I think we can get there. Um, other than that, same same as always, uh, link to the GitHub is going to be in the description below. Link to the Discord server is going to be in the description below. And any other relevant links like to Piskel or uh, Audacity are also going to be in the description below. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, please leave them in the comments below. We're going to be wrapping up this tutorial se series pretty soon. So if there's something you would like to see covered before I finish everything off, make sure you leave it in the comment section below. Or if you just want to tell me that you think I'm awesome, then uh, please also leave that in the comment section below. Other than that, have a great and beautiful rest of your day. Bye.